have to give them what they want. I don't think they're ready for this, though. Peace mode. Peace mode. Peace mode. All right, homies and homies. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about lower back pain. Now I've done some videos in the past that I know for a fact has helped people out. But one thing I know about lower back pain, really pain in general, you have to get down to the root of the equation. Math is the universal language. And notice in math equations, they wanna get down to the root of the equation. And at the end of the day, Pain is a problem, just like a math problem, and we gotta get down to the root. And what I've noticed a lot of times, pain, whether it be emotional pain or physical pain, sometimes it could be something that you're overlooking. Small, minor details. As they say, the devil is in the details. Sometimes it's little minor details you are overlooking that is fucking you every time. One of my favorite quotes from Benjamin Franklin is something along the lines of this. Be aware of the small expenses. It's the little leaks that sink a great ship. And what is a ship? A vessel. Notice your body is a temple. Your body is a vessel. And it could be those small energy links in your form those small breakdowns in form that could be causing your pain. See, the devil is in the details. So let's talk a little bit about the lower back and a small detail that you could be overlooking. And I truly hope this helps somebody out, all right? So let's talk about the body for an example. I've said this many times. Bodybuilding is literally a discipline that is backed by all universal laws and principles, which is why I love it, guys. And one of the universal laws is all is mind. This shit is mental. And if you notice, the body literally carries the brain around. And our brain don't, our body's only purpose is to carry our brain. It's just to carry our brain. And from that perspective only, that I, I believe that we live. It's for our brain to absorb knowledge because there's really no wise men in this world because as you know, knowledge is just everlasting. The only wise man is God. So I believe we have to look for God within ourselves and just use common sense. The body literally carries the brain around and the spine is like a column that holds that brain. Notice the spine is sitting right between the pelvis. The spine is sitting right between the pelvis and look at the hips. Now just imagine if you had one hip that was real tight and one hip that was real loose or one hip that was higher than the other. What would happen is the pelvis will be shifted slightly and if the pelvis is shifted slightly, that means the spine is going to be shifted slightly. And that's going to cause your lower back to get fired up constantly throughout the day. Just that little detail of having one hip higher than the other, one hip uh, tighter than the other, can cause your lower back pain because everything starts from the ground up. Everything starts from the bottom up. Peep the game. Notice in the book of Genesis, they created the man from dust on the ground. That's a message. Everything starts from the ground up. Bodybuilding is backed by all universal laws and principles. I can't stretch this shit enough. So, a lot of people are focused on the lower back pain and they could be overlooking a small minor detail. It could be a hip imbalance that could be causing their lower back pain. Also, when we talk about hip flexors, a lot of people tend to think about just the hip joint in general a lot of people only think about the rectus femoris when we're talking about the hip flexors. But if you actually look at the hip flexor muscle as a group, part of the hip flexors is the psoas muscles. And the psoas minor literally connects at the lower back. 
The psoas minor literally connected the lower back. You have the psoas major, which is at the hip, and they all meet at the pelvis. So think about that for a minute. You got the psoas muscles up here, you got psoas muscles down here, and they connect. They all connect at the pelvis. If those psoas muscles get real tight, that can cause you to hunch forward. Because remember, the psoas minor is at the lower back. So tight psoas muscles, tight hip flexors. The hip flexors are not just the rectus femoris. The hip flexors is not just right here. The hip flexors is here and here. All that shit's connected. So if you have tight hip flexors, that can cause rounding, slight rounding in the lower back, and that can cause your lower back pain. See, people are focused on the lower back, but they're not digging in. They're not digging in, getting down to the root of the equation. We gotta get to the root of this shit. It can be imbalanced hips. It can be tight hip flexors. Now there's a man by the name of Jeff Cavalier. He has a channel named Athlean X, large platform, millions of followers. His number one, as of today, his number one view video is not about how to build your pecs. His number one view video is about lower back pain. And that's one of his most viewed videos for a reason. One, because a lot of people deal with lower back pain. It is what it is. And secondly, it's because that video has helped a lot of people. See, one thing about Jeff Cavalier, I'm not saying I agree with all his training advice, but the man has a background in physical therapy. And he gave some top-notch game in this video. Check out this clip right here. If you've got back pain that you can literally put your thumbs right on, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that today and more importantly give you a strategy for making sure it does not come back ever again. The glute medius is this muscle that runs right up under here, okay? It's actually underneath the glute max. Lean forward. You can then rub your hands across the low back and you should instantly be able to feel two spots. Now if you notice, he was talking about lower back pain and the glute medius. We're gonna to get to that in just a minute. We're gonna to get to that in just a minute. But notice he talked about the PSIS. This bony area here that we're going to call the PSIS. Now, and he pointed to the iliac spine, right? The iliac crest, right? They were pointing right here at the PSIS. Notice the psoas muscles are at the front and they were pointing at the lower back. Because like I said, guys, tight psoas muscles can cause discomfort in the lower back. So I thought that was kind of cool how he pointed at the PSIS, right? And the point I'm making is, we have to balance out the body from front to back. Like I just said earlier, tight hip flexors can cause tightness and make you kind of hunch slightly forward and put a lot of strain in your lower back, which is why we need balance. That's why we have posterior chain muscles. That's why we have hamstrings. That's why we have glutes. We got to balance from front to back. This spine needs stability from the front and the back. But not just from the front to the back. The spine needs stability from the front, the back, and side to side. Just like on a compass, we have north, south, east, and west. You need stability from the front, back, side to side. How do we get stability from side to side? Exactly, Jeff just mentioned it, the glute medius. The glute medius is this muscle that runs right up under here. Okay. The glute medius is often overlooked. And if you look at this clip of Jeff, I'm gonna put the video link in the description for anybody that has not seen this video, go ahead and check it out. This might help you out. Go ahead and Soak up that game. Notice he's showing you movements without any weight. A lot of people, we're not going to say any names, they don't see the benefit of the mind-muscle connection. And that's partly because people only focus on looks. They only focus on building muscle. We have three muscle contractions for a reason. We have eccentric, concentric, and isometric for a reason. That's one of the reasons why yoga is so tough. Although I don't have any weights in my hands, my arms are isometrically being held in place. 
All right. So notice Jeff is moving the joints with his mind. Moving in a flossing type motion. There's little muscles, little stabilizing muscles that need some stimulation as well. Remember fam, all is mind. And they tell us life is in the blood. That's a fact. Life is in the blood. That's why blood flow is so important. That's why for recovery, blood flow is so important. Life is in the blood. If life is in the blood, that means light, electricity is in the blood. Notice we have neurons. We have neurons flowing through our body. We literally have electricity flowing through our body. The heart beats on its own. We have electricity flowing through our body. So when you're moving your joints, moving those muscles in these awkward angles, you're getting blood flow around the area and you're sending electricity from the mind into that area. You're literally springing these areas into life. Those little stabilizing muscles, although they're little muscles, they are still muscles. What do they tell us for years? They have told us for years, if you don't use it, you lose it. And as you see, Jeff is showing you how to fucking use it. Because if you lose it, if the stabilizing muscles get weak, guess what? You're going to have little flaws in your stability. Just that little. Remember, the devil is in the details. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, the details aren't big. You know, it's easy to see the big details. That's why in contracts, you got to read that fine print. See, Jeff is showing you the equivalent of that fine print. People overlook connecting with the body with no weights. Connect with the body with no weights. That's why I've been telling you guys for years, I still like doing push-ups. I still like doing dips. I still like doing pull-ups because I see the value in being able to connect with your body. So that tip right there is golden. Connect with the glute mid. Connect with that hip joint using your body weight. One of the functions of the glute medius is hip abduction. Notice Jeff is showing you hip abduction movements in the air with no weights. You can still do banded sidewalks. You can still do the hip abductor machine. But let me tell you, there is nothing like just connecting with your body with no weights. Which is why, again, I'm a fan of posing. We'll talk about that in some future videos. But uh, yes, banded sidewalks where you put a loop band around your uh, legs and you walk side to side, that's going to get you some hip abduction, right? Uh, the hip abductor machine. I like that machine as well. But also, don't forget to just connect with your body with no weights because those little bitty muscles you might not be able to reach. Really connect with your body deeply. Hit those little muscle fibers. You want to hit those little, hit those little bitty fibers that you might be overlooking. Get some blood flow in that area. Get some of that electricity from your mind in that area. Move them hips around. Okay? Also, the hip thrust. Now, people tend to use the hip thrust as a way to build their glutes. But look at this study right here. There's a man named Brett Contreras. Check out this clip right here. Now, I'm going to put a giant chart up here so you can kind of watch it as I announce the results. For upper glute max, hip thrust led to a 13.7% improvement, squats 12.8%. For the mid glute max, hip thrust 10.7%, squats 10.1%, and then lower glute max, hip thrust 21.5%, squats 19.2%. So very similar gluteus maximus muscle growth. For the glute medius and minimus, hip thrust led to 3.2% change, squats 0.8%. So neither group glue the glute medius that well. For the gluteus medius activation is pretty high with hip thrust, but it didn't lead to much growth. So this indicates that you would want to do frontal plane abduction to maximize glute medius growth. If you're now, if you pay attention to what Brett said, hip thrust builds the glute max. Glutes help keep the hips stable, and since they keep the hips stable, 
that's going to keep the pelvis balanced and that's going to keep the spine balanced. And also the hip thrust, although they don't grow the glute medius, they target and they fire up the glute medius. So what does this tell me? This tells me that hip thrust is one of the best exercises you can do for isometric holds. Take full benefit of this. Hip thrust builds the glute max and stimulates the glute medius. Do some isometric holds. What we know about the hip thrust is it doesn't have loading at the bottom, but it loads at the top, right? So it's really hard to get to that peak contraction. Here's a cheat code for you. Hit that peak contraction and hold it. Do some isometric hold sets. If you're struggling with lower back pain and you want to make sure you strengthen the, the stabilizing muscles that's going to help keep your pelvis stable, that's going to help keep your lower back stable, isometrically charge that area with some isometric holds. Get into that peak contraction of the hip thrust and hold that position for 20 to 45 seconds. Get some direct time of the tension. What isometric holds are good for is your stabilizing muscles. That's why people do planks. I've been seeing trainers talking shit about planks. We gotta stop focusing strictly on looks. Yes, we wanna build our bodies. We wanna look good, but this is called bodybuilding. And this is part of bodybuilding. You want to make sure your stabilizers are strong too. Because if your stabilizers aren't strong, you're going to be walking around here looking good, but you're going to have lower back pain. Who the fuck want to look good with lower back pain? Who the fuck want to look good and can't even put their head behind their head because they all stiff? We got to hit those stabilizing muscles. So the good thing about doing an isometric hold with the hip thrust, if you do an isometric hold with the hip thrust, not only will you be taxing and strengthening, isometrically charging the glutes, which helps stabilize the hips, right? So you're strengthening the stabilizing muscles, right? Which is already great. But you're going to be stretching. Remember I told you earlier, tight psoas muscles can cause you to kind of hunch forward. If you're holding a uh, hip thrust at its peak contraction, you're going to be stretching the shit out of the psoas muscles. So not only are you strengthening the stabilizing muscles that help keep the hip stable, you're going to help loosen up and stretch those tight psoas muscles. Double bang for your buck. And if you peep the game, just peep the game. Notice those reverse hypers. Notice they stretch the psoas muscles. That's one of the reasons why it works so good for the lower back. That reverse hypermotion is literally stretching the psoas muscles and giving you some traction in the spine. See guys, it's all numbers. Just track the numbers. Not only are you doing an exercise that's going to help stabilize the hips and give your lower back more support, the hip thrust doesn't tax the lower back at all. So you're pretty much going to get great benefits without risk. So wrapping this video up, all right? A lot of people tend to overlook balance between front to back for the lower back pain. And also, people tend to overlook balance from side to side, which is why we got to make sure we have strong healthy glute medius. Be sure to connect with your hip joint. Connect with your glute medius without weights and with weights. Remember, the devil is in the details. If this video was helpful, be sure to comment below and let me know what you guys think. Also, I offer online macro-based coaching at beastmode316.com. You want to get whole ready? You ready to leave the bullshit behind and get defined? Hit me up at beastmode316.com. As always, thank you for your support. Don't forget to like my shit, comment, subscribe, and buy 30 of them bitches and holler back at your boy. Peace.
moment of silence before we fuck up these weights. Oh, 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 o